right, hey everyone, and welcome to That Vintage Lens Podcast. I'm Brandon Stanley, and we're going to be talking about medium format cameras today. But first, I want to tell you about our sponsor. That's right, Spirit Juice Studios, some of the finest Catholic content that you're going to find on the web. Go to spiritjuicestudios.com. You'll find everything from documentaries to short films and everything in between. So check it out. That's www.spiritjuicestudios.com. So as I said, today uh, I'm here in the studio with Daniel Gebert and Andy Adamas, and we're going to be talking medium format, when to use it, when not to use it, what cameras do you like, all that fun stuff. But uh, I figured starting out, kind of talk a little bit about what is medium format for people who have no idea. All right. <laughs> so yeah, a little bit about like what medium format is, like why, why would someone want to shoot medium format? To the layman. To the layman. The yeah. layman. The layman. To- so 120 is a different format than 35. Um, 35 millimeter film is probably the classic thing that everybody thinks of, right? It comes in a canister. It's got like the, the little rivets on the side so that the gears can catch all that canister, kind of Canister, you stuff. sound you sound fancy already. Not fancy. <laughs> well, 120 is is uh, is just basically a roll of film taped onto a piece of paper, nice. glued onto a piece of paper, and it rolls up onto a you know just a standard roll and. Um, and yeah. really, it's like medium format is everything that's over 35 millimeter as far as i understand and yet smaller than like a four by five large format so I, i'm sure there's a more specific definition but for sure. for general um knowledge of medium format it's like everything above 35 millimeter and under large format which large format i'm sure we'll talk about in a completely yeah, different yes. day it's a, a totally different topic but uh but so why would why would someone want to shoot medium format over 35 like what are the benefits there so, I think medium format, and typically when we talk medium format, we're talking about 120 film, which Mm -hmm. is the only, as far as I know, really the only consumer grade medium format film that's widely available. Widely, yeah. I I think there are a couple others that are are available, but they're really hard to get. 220? I don't even know if 220 is made anymore. I don't don't, don't think so. Yeah, I mean, you can still get get 220 um, Mm. if you're looking on eBay, some places. Um, If we're, yeah, but so if we're talking 120, I think it really hits on. Um, the maximum amount of quality you can get for the convenience. Because when you're talking about a 645 camera, mm-hmm. you still, for the most part, are shooting a camera that looks and feels like a standard DSLR or whatever, you mm-hmm. know, what we're used to at work. Like yeah. it doesn't feel like some 8x10 monster camera. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So it still has virtually all the convenience of a standard camera experience. But um, as pretty much uh, as high quality as you can get yeah. for that. Um, yeah, because it's what? Uh, it's like twice the height of 35 millimeter or something in that range. I'm not sure the dimensions, but uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, You can I'm, fit like four, four to five, right? Uh, 35 millimeter. Uh, I, I think it's something in that range. Yeah. And that partly depends on whether you're shooting... Uh, you know, like six four five, six by seven, because there's a pretty big difference yeah. between the two. Mm-hmm. I mean, six by seven is pretty large, and then you can go six by nine, which is a monster. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah. So I wanted to talk a little bit too about um, which cameras we we've got here. We've got a, a, a few cameras sitting got here on the plethora. table. Yeah, a plethora of cameras sitting on the table here. Some of them are fairly new purchases. Some have been sitting around for a while, and and they range in age from like back to the '60s to um, when was? Do you know the date that the um, Bronica, that your Bronica was made? So I got the last one they made, and that was uh, between. It was introduced in 1990, and it came out in '91. Gotcha. So that's the Bronica SQ AI. Nice. So. Okay. Yeah, because I the, I think the oldest one that we've got sitting here, or it might, you know, I don't know when the um, uh, the twin lens was made, but uh, the the Bronica here might be one of the older ones. Yeah. Let's talk about this one though. Sure. Yeah. So um, the this Bronica. Is what we got it started. Yeah. For all of us. Yeah. Exactly. So well. uh, my original um, medium format that I picked up was the uh, Yashica uh, EM. Uh, twin lens reflex and that one was uh, I picked that up years ago um, back when I was in college but uh, I, I didn't realize at the time it doesn't focus to infinity um, <laughs> it's been dropped at some point so uh, there's some <laughs> I know it doesn't look like it's been dropped right it looks like it's in great shape but um, I took it in for a pair and they were like <laughs> <laughs> this part right here. We're, we're laughing because Andy's shaking the uh, the light meter that's on the front and it's just barely hanging on there so that's that's the main clue that it was it was broken but I uh, wouldn't have known unless you showed it to me yeah when you showed it to me this morning 
You're like, yeah, everything but this part right here. Yeah. I mean, it looks pretty much in mint condition otherwise. Um, but yeah, the thing I, I, I liked about it at the time was um, it's fairly compact. Mm -hmm. um, for people who don't know what twin lens reflex cameras are, there's there are literally two lenses on the front of the camera. And so one of them is for focusing. The top one is for focusing. Uh, and then the bottom one is actually for the picture taking. Uh, and so um, both lenses move uh, in conjunction with, with each other. Uh, so the idea is that it, it can keep the camera smaller, and then also with the uh, with the shutter that's built into the the second lens, it's super quiet. Um, so you're not going to wake anyone anyone up, or you're not going to disturb anyone if you're taking a picture at say someone's wedding, you know, in the middle of of the service. So um, would you say that's a good uh, for someone that shoots on a rangefinder if they want to get into medium format? That might be a good. Cause the whole, I think this is just a good in entry in general. Yeah, I love these. Cameras. That was the first thing I noticed. It was like this is something you can carry around your neck. Yeah, yeah. it's light. It. I feel like um, because the technology and the TLRs are very old, very tried and true, um, you can get them incredibly inexpensively mm -hmm. because there, there's very few moving parts. How much yeah. was that one? That one, I I want to say I picked it up for like. A little over 200 bucks okay so it wasn't yep. crazy expensive you know when we're talking expenses here for medium format I mean for film you're looking anywhere from like what 150 ish until I mean if you look at some of the newer pen taxes or heck yeah. the contacts yep. you're looking at something in the two to three thousand dollar range yeah. still yeah. even though it's it's film um, because they're, they're you know more modern uh, cameras and people still want them so much. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, this one was this one was like two hundred bucks, uh, a little over. At the time, I just wanted something to mess around with. Mm -hmm. um, I actually picked it up um, partly because my wife was uh, taking film classes, and so it was like a, a kind of a, a quasi gift for her. So with, that was her camera. So it, it was kind of her did, camera. Did you drop it? Brandon? Yeah, exactly. I, I did not drop it. I oh, promise. Okay. No. So I picked it up so that she could use it, but I also knew like we were engaged at the time, and so it was also you know one of those like I'm going to get you a gift that's also kind of for me <laughs> you're like Homer Simpson <laughs> exactly getting Marge the bowling ball with Homer on it <laughs> there you go <laughs> so um, yeah so I picked it up and it's great for taking portraits because it'll focus out to about you know 20 feet but beyond that <laughs> it won't really focus so anyway um, so you wanted to talk about the Bronica so I, I only talk about the twin lens because um, I picked up the Bronica because I knew that I needed a medium format camera that actually focused out to infinity mm -hmm. because it's a good I, thing yeah I, I like taking um landscape shots and you kind of need something that focuses to infinity yeah, if you're gonna do that so it's optional i picked up the bronica it's the bronica s2a which was uh one of the early bronicas um they were really designed to be a competitor to uh the Hasselblad so if you yeah. look at them like the 500c the 500 exactly. cm yeah so they the look, classic classic medium format camera yeah, design yeah definitely it's kind of the quintessential Pretty medium much. format for most people um yeah so it looks very similar to a, a Hasselblad 500 series mm -hmm. um in fact like I, I've been walking around Chicago a couple days with this before and people are like oh yeah I got a Hasselblad and I'm like not really, but it looks <laughs> like it, right? You know, so um, it functions very similarly. And and this was like the Japanese Hasselblad, essentially. What they wanted to do is make something that was like the Hasselblad, but better. Mm -hmm. And in some ways they succeeded, in other ways they failed. Yeah. So one of the real benefits, I think, to the Hasselblad is that it feels like a, a Swiss watch. Like all the parts are just so finely machined. Mm. Um, you turn the knobs and they just, they, they feel amazing. Mm. It feels like you're working with something that's really high precision. In that regard, they did not improve anything here. Um, so this, <laughs> this definitely feels like a work in progress in some ways. Mm -hmm. um, that's not to say that it feels bad. It's just you know, it, it, it feels a little bit clunky in some ways. Mm -hmm. The the focusing mechanism isn't quite as smooth as the Hasselblad. Uh, but one way they did improve it is they were able to take it to a one one thousandth of a second shutter speed. So, yeah. much so nice. it's much better in daylight uh, to be able to go up to a thousand rather than just 500, yep. mm -hmm. uh, which is partly why the Hasselblad's called Can it. I also add, um, because the Hasselblad is so quintessential medium format, mm -hmm. I think that look kind of defined what people desire in medium format mm -hmm. and the Bronica not having been as successful. Um, it, it just kind of looks like a 1950s refrigerator. Like <laughs> it, it, it doesn't look, yeah. it doesn't look sleek. And I don't know if it's, you know, well that, that in the, 
That was one of the things that uh, I read online that people actually thought m- this was more refined, mm. like how they have. Oh, now, it's, I, it's a little like uh, it's dehorned uh-huh. like kind of kind of thing where it's smooth and on the sides, and mm-hmm. whereas the Hasselblad is is more boxy, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you tell little, me because I haven't. Bit. Yeah, no, and I mean, definitely by looks, this one is is um, it looks very ref- refined. Um, it's only when you like start to play with it a little bit and mm-hmm. you, you feel that there are like some areas and you know, I don't want to give it a bad name by any stretch. I, yeah. I love this camera. Um, it was my first fully working medium format <laughs> camera. Yeah. Um, and I, and I'll continue shooting it even, you know, if I've picked up other cameras just because, um, I like the way that it feels in the hand and it's, it's fairly compact and fairly easy to travel with, um, so the main reason that these got kind of a bad name was, um, I, I think it was, I think it was Bronica's third camera that they put out. I could be wrong, but I know they put out the S and then they put out the S2 mm-hmm. and this is the S2A. And so the S had a bunch of reliability issues. The S2 was much better, but they used brass gears, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And so those, um, it takes a little bit of force to wind this um, because the winding uh, resets the mirror or re- resets the shutter rather. Um, and it would strip the gears out on the wow. S2. And so then they upgraded them to steel gears in the S2A. So this camera, the reliability is much higher, but it's still kind of follows in that the bad name footstep sure. of, of the earlier ones where it's like they're trying for something but they're not quite getting there um so yeah i mean i would say if you're looking at buying one if you really want to play russian roulette get an s2 mm-hmm. if you want to get something that you know will probably work longer um get the s2a and, and honestly so this one we were in um we were in canada we were at uh niagara falls and i was carrying my bag up and this guy um, went to help me and and grabbed um, part of the stroller that I was carrying up and it knocked this camera out and it <sighs> fell down the stairs. Down the and stairs? Down the stairs. They were carpeted stairs. Okay. But it fell like three Stair. stairs and I was like, that's it. It's broken. It's done. Yeah. And no no signs of any sort of drop. Wow. It. it functions perfectly. There you go. So it's still a robust camera, which yeah. is still is something that you're going to get out of something in this era where it's built out of metal. It, it's it's a little bit heavy, and I like a heavy camera. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, it's um, it's still light enough to carry around yeah. if you're traveling. So, yeah. So that's that was the S two A and Y. Have you shot on that? No, I haven't. I I probably should get around to it because I I love the six by six format, and yeah. I think overall, one of the big attractors to me to medium format is the fact that un- unlike 35 millimeter, which some companies played around with format like Olympus with the pen mm-hmm. F and the FT, um, medium format, a bunch of different manufacturers make all sorts of different formats, six by six, six by nine, like you were saying earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, and six by six has such a unique look to it yeah. that even when you're shooting landscapes, which aren't necessarily traditionally thought as you mm-hmm. know square format kind of, pictures landscapes and stuff but mm-hmm. um portraits and stuff look really special in six by six so mm-hmm. i should try it out but I haven't gotten around to it yet yeah and if it's something that we haven't said already uh one of the huge benefits to medium format is just the huge increase in uh in resolution that mm-hmm. you get from yeah. the fact that the frame is so much larger than 35 right mm-hmm. um There have been times, because I I shoot Ektar a lot of times in these if I'm doing landscapes, and there have been times when I look at it and I go, you know what, that almost looks, it has, it has film colors, but the sharpness is almost like digital um, because there's so much resolution there. Um, And so if you're, if you're one who likes a lot of grain, uh, then medium format may not be the format that you want to jump right into. That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. But. If you want, you know, want grain, take a step back. I. I'm not saying that there's no or grain, but Delta like Ektar, well, yeah, <laughs> shoot Delta. That's actually when I think this the medium format really shines with when it comes to grain, because you go into like the 3200 speed mm-hmm. films and they're so high grain, mm-hmm. but you throw it in the medium format and um, it, it's, there's still a lot of grain there, but it's much more subdued yeah. than it is on like a 35. You can get away with a lot higher speed films. You can, you can. So... Yeah. Awesome camera. Yeah. Really yeah. awesome camera. A unique look, unique experience. I mean, really, the reason I picked that up was because I wanted a Hasselblad. Of course. And couldn't <laughs> afford one. Absolutely. So I, I feel like the time, that's the selling point. It was like, well, I'll get one someday. But in the meantime, I'm going to pick up something that looks like it and feels like it. Yeah. 
Man, this gets is, mistaken for one on the streets of Chicago. It is exactly. heavier. Yeah. It's heavy. So I think moving on in age, what would be next? Ooh. After the, those, I don't know. I can't remember when the Mamiya came out. Definitely before 1990. <laughs> De- before 1990. I want to yeah. say 1970 something. 1970, sure. Oh, really? 1975. Um, it's difficult because, the, uh, so I'm talking about the Mamiya M645. Uh, my particular model is the 1000S. Um, and this had a lot of iterations. So there were iterations before the 1000S that had, um, you know, less features, I would say. Uh, no metered viewfinder, for example. Um, and plenty of versions afterwards. So that included autofocus, it included auto winders, pretty much every automation feature you could think of but not on this this one this one one has the only thing that is automated is the optional uh viewfinder everything else is manual gotcha it's manual focus manual wind manual everything else it it has a meter right it has a uh, yes it's in the viewfinder (laughs) which you can take off and it didn't and it originally came with a waist level viewfinder and a lot of people really wanted the so you uh, have a waist level viewfinder for that i do not oh okay but there is one out there that it originally shipped with gotcha um but i I really like looking through that big prism viewfinder Mm -hmm. Um, i like both experiences Mm -hmm. i love waist level viewfinders but um the reason i picked up this particular camera was because it feels like i'm getting all the benefits of medium format with uh, also all the benefits and ease of use of a dslr like a 5d or something sure yeah, and it, it looks like it's fairly compact. Now, something I was noticing, uh, difference between the two. So the Bronica that we were talking about, the S2A, does have removable backs. So yes. that's that's yeah. also something, I didn't even think about this before, but I mean, I have before, just not in the past couple of minutes. One of the benefits to medium format is that a lot of the cameras, you can switch out the backs. Right, yeah. And so, if you're at a if you're shooting an event and and you want you know you don't want to be shooting Delta 3200 during the daytime, mm-hmm. you can put something like Portra yeah. 160 in there, and then once the sun goes down or once it's you know starting to go down, then you can switch backs almost instantly, right. um, which really gives you the flexibility that where you know if you were shooting 35 millimeter, um, there are very few cameras. There are some out there, um, but there are very few that actually have removable mm-hmm. backs on them. Mm-hmm. Um, I think particularly that came into its own in the studio, and that's why the the Hasselblad 500 series is so sought after, is because in the studio, professional photographers would have assistants loading up film in another back, Mm -hmm. and when they would get done with one, they would swap it out really quickly, and the photographer would never have to take his eye off of the subject, basically, right? Yeah. His film would get loaded for him, swap it out immediately, and keep shooting, Um, which is something that I kind of miss on on the Mamiya, but not really. Sure. Because, again, it kind of blends the worlds of 35 millimeter convenience shooting and the, the medium format mm-hmm. experience. And um, it forces you to go through that role. It does. It slows you down in a different way. And the one way that I have coped with it, and is another way that, uh, is one way that a lot of 35 millimeter photographers have coped with this whole not being able to switch out your back is just carrying two cameras. Mm-hmm. And I don't have two 645s, but I have a 35 mil camera and, sure. and the Mamiya. So if I have a high-speed black and white film in one camera, I'll have a low-speed color in the other, and I'll mm-hmm. just swap out, and I feel like that's a pretty happy medium. Which one do um, you usually keep in which? You know, I really like shooting uh, low-speed color in the medium format mm-hmm. so that I can get that incredibly high-resolution, high-crispness, mm-hmm. um, pastel tone, kind of Portra 160 look. Um, and then, a, you know, a HP5 or a Tri-X in the 35 millimeter to kind of get sure. that documentary feel. I, th- I think that's a good, um, a good way of doing it. And that's what one of my favorite photographers, Matt Day, does with his Leica M6 and his Pentax 645. So. Nice. W- 160? Yeah, Portra 160. I just shot four or five rolls of Portra 160. That's and it? I really enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. So where, where do you send your film typically? I s- do what... What you all do? <laughs> I send it to the dark room. Yeah. I wish that wasn't my answer, but it yeah. is my answer. Hey, it's it's a great place to send it. You know, mm-hmm. there are other places that have um, maybe some other benefits, like the way yeah. that they scan it or whatever. But uh, um, I've been super happy with the dark room just from uh, 
the cost to what I get ratio. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, as long as you get the super scans. Yeah. If you get the super scans, I mean, you, they're scanning it in. I can't remember the resolution, but it's high. Enough. It's enough. It's it's more than enough. Um, it's enough that I can have it on, you know, a 5K iMac as mm -hmm. the the background. Wow. And I'm not yeah. seeing pixels at that point. I'm, I'm still seeing grain. Yes. Which was my issue with a few other places that I'd send film off to. I'd I, If I zoomed in, which I, I don't do that too much, but like if I was really trying to show it on a large screen or something, um, I don't want to see pixels before I see grain. Yeah. You know, that's the reason for one of the, the many reasons, but mm -hmm. a, a large reason for shooting film is is the, the grain and the quality there. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, um, so you've gotten the super scan, right? There's three tiers for yeah, the right. dark room. Yeah. There's like the standard, which is included. And then there's, um, which is, I think about 2000, 1000 by 2000 or something along yeah. those lines. You're talking about if you're printing a few, four by six, a few thousand pixels yeah. across, um, yeah. And then there's like enhanced scans, yep. which are, I don't remember. I, I haven't actually gotten those. 3,000 by 2,000 approximately. Something like which that. Which is okay. Yeah. I've done that in the past and I've been very happy. What I think, and I can't prove this obviously, sure. but I have a hunch that when you do the super scans, the lab technicians spend more time processing and kind of looking over your scans because mm. I've gotten super scans back. And if you take resolution out of the picture, mm -hmm. it just looks like more time has gone into making sure that the white point is right and the black point and the white balance and all of that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. again, that's just a hunch. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I have mixed reviews. But. Yeah. Yeah. Cause there were a couple, a couple of yours that they like, they didn't crop properly. Yeah. That's so interesting. Did you get the super scans? Yes. Wow. Huh. Well, the, the middle tier, whatever that is. Oh, that the, that's, enhanced? that's the one that I've had issues with as well. Really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I wonder. Like clipping yeah. out my whites and stuff. No, it was more that. so the, the framing, or so when they s scanned the image. So when I got my negatives back on that uh, photo that has all the images on there, mm -hmm. and my negatives, everything is correct. It's everything's straight. But when they sent me the actual photos themselves, one in particular was shifted. Hmm. Yeah. Which was the best one. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> so bad. <laughs> my, something that plays into my hunch about like the time that goes into scans is, as far as I know, they use an Aritsu scanner, mm -hmm. which can do medium format N35. And there is an auto setting on the Naritsu that will, as far as I know, will auto feed and apply auto settings and just keep going. They've got to get a ton of, oh, I'm sure you they know, get a ton. yeah. So, I mean, so those super scans, I think a human actually, you know, makes sure everything is good instead of just having the machine run them through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But nice. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, uh, I mean, I've always gotten super scans, so I don't know. I, mm -hmm. I can't really compare it to the So others, it's super scans yeah. in the middle, or is that the highest? That's the highest. highest. Oh, yeah, it's so the highest. Yeah, I haven't, yeah, I've only gone right yeah. into the middle go tier. Go all the way. Go, <laughs> yeah, go, yeah, go, 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 go home, all the right? way, yeah. Yeah. So what made you decide on the uh, Mamiya here, aside from, because you were looking at a, a few, right? I was, yeah. I really, I had my eye early on the Yashica G, the 124G, mm -hmm. and the D. Okay, the, the twin lens. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I love the TLR experience. I love the top-down viewfinder. It's very small, very compact. You can fit it in a backpack. Mm -hmm. All those things. There is um, a few of the later model years of the Yashikas were sold with a 2.8 lens, 80mm mm. 2.8 instead of the 80mm 3.5. Mm -hmm. More rare, harder mm -hmm. to find. Um, but if I found one, I was going to probably pick that up. But also, I've, I've always loved that... Um, the Mamiya 645 is available with that 80 millimeter 1.9. Oh, yeah. that is a sweet lens. It is a sweet lens. So, so that one, what's the aperture on that? 1.9. Wow. 1. Yes. 9. Which I, is pretty rare. Yeah. It's also, it's very, very shallow. Mm -hmm. Um, which it's interesting. Cause you know, I feel like one of the selling points that people have a lot for medium format is like, Oh, you get such a shallower depth of field. Right. That's only true with some lenses. Right. Um, and I read an article. I, I need to find it. If I find it, I'll post it in the, um, in the notes for this episode. But uh, there was an article that listed like the, uh, the top five or six uh, lenses for. Yes. Um, I, saw I think this. I shared it with you guys. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, but there were a few. There was like the um, Pentax like one 105 2.4 yeah that's for the pentax 6 7 system mm -hmm. yeah so there are a few that give you really shallow depth of field mm -hmm. but which is i mean the medium format's going to give you crazy depth of field already mm -hmm. yeah it's got that it's got the much larger um 
I don't want to say sensor size. I, it's like actually we, sensor we think, size. Yeah, yeah, we we think mm-hmm. in terms of digital, but uh, image plane. Yeah, something like that. Because my <laughs> lens is a two point eight, and I th- from what I've seen, that's common mm-hmm. to have a two point eight eighty millimeter lens yeah, or seventy five. Yeah, Hasselblad's. That's. I mean, they might have had one that was a little bit mm-hmm. shallower, but as a whole, the main Hasselblad lens is an eighty. It's, it's an eighty, right? Two point eight. Yeah. 2.8, yeah. Um, I mean, the Bronica has a um, my my Bronica the S two A has. Um, a 2.8 mm-hmm. and then even like the Roloflex the twin lens reflexes I don't know that it gets much wider than 2.8 yeah, I don't yeah. know that I've seen any that are and for the most part you don't need wider than 2.8 no you really don't yeah. if you're talking about medium format you're probably doing stuff in the daytime you're not going to shoot you know an mm-hmm. event at night with a f- speed light or right. a flash yeah, how many or people do you know that are really shooting um, I don't know I guess for portraits or anything that's uh, where your subject's close up and you're really looking for that yeah, drop it's, off. It's mm-hmm. pretty much for, um, for weddings and, or, and, yeah. and portraits, which is why the Mamiya, the 645 here, was like one of the primary mm-hmm. wedding photographer cameras of the day. Right. So it's, it's – uh, and I like that it's fairly compact. It is. It's, it's pretty heavy. Yeah, it's got the it's, weight. You know, <laughs> it's older, It's so it's all metal. It is heavy. Yeah. I mean, and did you feel – have you yeah. – yeah, it, there's there's definitely a weight difference. Well, this morning when Daniel brought his in, and then I was like, "Geez, there is a huge difference." Yeah, yeah. Yours has the weight um, when you add on the winder and everything. To yes, it. then it does. that's when it, yeah. it sends it above. And when you take off my pretty chunky electronic, yeah, uh, oh, the, the like, prism, yeah, the, viewfinder. the prism viewfinder, it gets much lighter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but even still, it, it's very, very well built. I mean, mm-hmm. the thing's yeah. pretty much a tank. You, you can know. drop down a set of stairs. I will not drop <laughs> down a set sure it's carp- of stairs. Carpeted. Yeah, just, just to be sure, yeah. Yeah. Well, and so for people who may not uh, know much about medium format or just need a refresher, so the, it's all taking, all of these cameras take the same film. It's yes. all 120 film. Yes. Um, but they they take it in different ways. So the Mamiya, for example, it's a 645 format, so it's it's 6 centimeters by by 4.5 uh, centimeters. Exactly, yeah. Um and so it's it's uh in the normal use, it's cropping a little bit off the top mm-hmm. and the bottom not really cropping, but um it's it's a a wider image than it is tall. Yes. With the six by six, that's in, and I probably didn't say that properly, but whatever. In, <laughs> in the six by six, like both of the Bronicas that we have here, and also the twin lens, yep. it's a full six centimeters by six centimeters, right. and it's a square image, which um, is what uh, Instagram was originally based off of. That's yeah. why they had the square photos. Um, and so, well, I guess it could have been from instant. Like I guess it would make probably more a, sense. A bit of both. But yeah, it's yeah. Polaroid. I, yeah. Polaroids and also, but I don't think, blood. if I remember correctly, the Polaroids aren't a true square image. Really, they're a little bit long. They're a little bit but taller tall. than they yeah. are wide. Um, but yeah, so uh, six by six is probably the most common one, and then you have yeah. six by seven, which Pentax does, which is uh, and Mamiya has one. Mamiya. Oh, Mamiya does have one yeah. as well. Yeah, that RB is like the, the uh, hipster camera of choice if you can afford it yeah there's a lot of people on youtube who will do portrait photography one of our uh, favorites yeah oh go ahead what's the impression well oh i'm sorry the impression of our favorite mamiya 7 youtube personality oh yeah george muncie i love george muncie (laughs) but he has a very very dry very monotone british delivery oh yeah uh, He's, I mean, I love watching his videos. I love watching his videos, but yeah. it's, there's no false enthusiasm behind his voice. Yeah. And that's pretty rare on YouTube for photography people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, it's six by seven is a beautiful, beautiful, large negative. You get pretty much all the resolution you could possibly get out of that, yeah. uh, out of that format, but you only get 10 photos per roll. I know that's, that's the hard brutal. part. Yeah. yeah. It's brutal. And that's one of how the many, big reasons that I got the 645. Yeah. How many do you get from this? 15. 15. Okay. So you're, you're getting, so it's, the images aren't quite as large, mm-hmm. but you're also getting five more images right. per roll. Than a six by seven. Right. right. And yeah. right. coming from 35, coming from digital yeah. before 35, mm-hmm. um, resolution is not the reason that I'm shooting, you know, or um, I'm sorry. The six by seven resolution is mm-hmm. not the reason that I want to shoot medium format. Mm-hmm. It's just the slight increase that you know, the slight but noticeable increase over thirty-five millimeter, and the six four five gives me that. And mm-hmm. in spades, if I shoot one twenty or if I shoot uh, one hundred speed black and white or mm-hmm. one portrait one sixty, for example, Ektar, 
I'm getting the sharpness. I'm getting more than what I need oh, in sharpness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't see the need to shoot a six, seven negative or mm-hmm. even like a six, nine negative. Yeah. I'm sure if you blow it up, you know, and I'm sure even to some extent in certain circumstances, if you look at it on, I don't know, a, a 5k IMAX screen or something larger, you might yeah. be able to pick it out, but Probably. it's going to be mm-hmm. negligible. It's not going to be, yeah. um, now you go six by nine yeah. versus six, four, five, and you look at it on a larger screen, you're probably going to tell a bit of a difference. Yeah. Um, but that's about as large as you get before you go large format. Pretty much, yeah. That is the largest before Yeah, large I'm, format, I'm pretty sure yeah. it's the, yeah, until you go four by five. And another thing, again, that went into my decision on this, the Mamiya 645 was if you go to the Mamiya 67, the mm-hmm. RB or the R- RZ67, mm-hmm. beautiful cameras, very similar in build quality and design to, to the one that I picked up. Um, but they're monstrously big. Yeah. This little 645 camera, which is much larger and much heavier than any 35 millimeter camera, mm-hmm. looks like a toy compared to a 67 camera. Mm-hmm. And it's just too much. This, I can put a strap on it and I can carry it around my shoulder, mm-hmm. throw it, you know, kind of have it kind of act like a 35 millimeter camera sure, where it's sure. on my hip. Mm-hmm. Um, a six by seven camera, as far as I know, there's really none out there that you can walk around and carry it unless, Not easily. unless you're yeah. talking about range finders. Well, Even cr- the Pentax that so people say that's yeah, just, that's a it's monster. huge. I lo- it's an awesome camera, yeah. but yeah, it's a monster. I'm trying to convince uh, Jason to pick one up right now. <laughs> uh, one of our coworkers yeah. um, uh, is looking to get into medium format as well. And I was like, hey, if you want to outdo all of us on size, I mean, just, uh, <laughs> Hilarious. you know, go six by seven. But, uh, but yeah, it was interesting. So we had... Um, uh, there was a, a, a guy that worked with us before, Chris Yates, uh, fantastic yeah. guy. Shoots, and he was actually, um, he's been shooting film much longer than I have. Um, and I was talking to him at one point because he did pick up, I believe it was the RZ67. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, you know, I love this camera. The optics are fantastic. Mm-hmm. He's like, but you don't want to really take it into the field that much. It's yeah. more of a studio camera. That's what I've yeah, yeah. seen. And what he, what he the way he carried it, he he carried it in a uh, in a Pelican case. Jeez. Yeah. Um, pretty much everywhere it had it you know he had his pelican case that it sat in um and he also said the build quality isn't quite like what this one is a little plastic ear a little plastic ear mm-hmm. yeah it was designed more for being in a studio where it's not going to be bumped a bunch and it's mm-hmm. not going to be you know mistreated it whereas has a bellows yeah that's it's true kind of hidden oh really but it has a bellows huh. mm-hmm. yeah the lenses are are fixed focus mm. and you use a bellows to focus with two different knobs oh, wow. two oh different, yeah yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so this one was definitely built a lot more for, you know, wedding photographers and people yeah. out in the field where it's, you know, it's going to get beat up a little bit and you can mm-hmm. tell from the build quality that that's yeah. what it's going the for. Everyday medium format. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Which is exactly how I use it. Mm-hmm. Well, I do want to talk about the Bronica that you've got. First, I want to pause just to uh, uh, have a quick sponsor break, talking about Spirit Juice Studios here. It's the studio that we are recording out of. It's the place where all of us work. Great uh, studio for making uh, Catholic content. We've got uh, so much that we're working on here, so many projects in the works. You can check out the YouTube, too. Uh, search for Spirit Juice Studios on YouTube. Um, we've got lots of content there, everything from week, uh, weekend reflections to uh, short pieces that we've been working on. And brand new, actually, uh, as of the past few weeks, uh, we now have Spirit Juice Espanol. Um, so we've got uh, a Spanish channel as well for those of you who do not speak English. English or just prefer to speak Spanish. All right, so we're back talking about Andy's camera here, the Bronica. What is it? S Q A I. I know nice. I get it. I do. I get it mixed up all the time too. Boy in the block. Yeah. yeah. Originally, I started off just one roll with Brandon's camera, and that's all it took. <laughs> you were and it was yeah, it was a horrible Sunday because it was freezing out. I had Brandon lent me his camera, and I had I was like I have the whole weekend to do this. And Saturday came and went, Sunday, you know, going to church. So I'm like, man, I'm not going to shoot this. I saw you that Sunday. Yeah, that was, that was hilarious. I was on, like, I was on a part of, in a part of town where I'm never hanging around. It was just like on the West side and we're sitting at a Starbucks and Andy walks up next to the window and he's like, Brandon? Yeah, what? I was like, <laughs> what are you doing here? I know. It was. He's like, yeah, you come here all the time. I'm like, no, I've never been to the Starbucks. Before. <laughs> this is the Starbucks we go to every Sunday. It's crazy before yeah. church. Yeah, and I saw his uh, pray the rosary. Oh yeah, the, the <laughs> I was like, on that's the window. totally his car. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I was. Uh, I took one picture after church uh, of our church, and I was 
hooked. It was and it's weird because it was freezing. My hands were freezing. I'm like, this is so awesome. Yeah. And then uh, took you know usually this is not the the case, but I went through all twelve uh, pictures or all twelve photos within four hours, and nice. um, which is fast, obviously. For you, for for well, I, <laughs> well, the <laughs> reason like, I can, I, just I can gauge it a little bit. Five in a day. I took four pictures Accurate. in four pictures in four hours last Saturday, just because yeah. I was you know taking it slow. Yeah, yeah taking it slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, that the Bronica. So originally, I was going to go with the Pentax six by seven, mm. and uh, I don't know. I mean, I I really appreciate Brandon and Daniel's uh, input, and uh, Brandon even suggested, hey, you should look at the Bronicas, the new ones. And then there's a YouTube personality that um, I really like, and you guys have started to appreciate his mm -hmm. work. And he uses the SQAI. So, um, and I heard from one of the videos that this is the the camera you should get if you want the closest thing to a Hasselblad yeah. before yeah. you pay for that. As far as how good uh, or how bright the uh, waist level viewfinder yeah. is and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That really, really is the pops. great thing about Bronica is that it's it's got the uh, so many of the features and a lot of the uh, the image quality. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people will talk about how there's just something about the Hasselblad, you know, yeah. that, that it sets that the images are a little bit apart, and that may be true, mm -hmm. but. I think you can at least get 95, 98% there mm -hmm. yeah. with the Bronica. Um, sure, it may not be as classic or, or whatever you want to yeah. call it as a Hasselblad. Mm -hmm. However, you're still getting a stellar lens mm -hmm. that's super sharp, um, especially with this format. You know, it's incredibly sharp. And I don't know that you're really going to be able to tell that much of a difference yeah. in the yeah. end. I mean, show me a Hasselblad image next to a Bronica image. I, yeah, I don't I know that people would be able to pick it out. Yeah, and it's like... One of the reasons I think we all shoot film is because of the imperfections. Mm -hmm. You know, if we wanted to shoot something perfect, we'd go grab a 5D yeah. and call it a day. Yeah. Well, that's why people it's, ask about, like, you know, why do you, why would you shoot something that's not nearly as sharp as digital or not nearly as whatever as digital? And I'm like, okay, well, what is technically better, the mm. Mona Lisa or a picture <laughs> that, that, you know, someone took of, right. of, yeah. of, of the Mona, person. Mona Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> it's like there's just because something is sharper or more, um, more accurate to real life does not mean that it is better. It's a different type of mm -hmm. art form in yeah. a sense. Um, and so, sure, uh, digital at this point might have eclipsed film when it comes to resolution or sharpness or, you know, some of those things. But there's something about film that's just intangible, something. Mm -hmm. And we had the whole episode before this was talking about film and why we still shoot film. So yeah. I don't want to rehash everything here, <laughs> but... Um, but yeah. So, and this one's six by six format. Six by six. It also it also came with a six by four five um, back, back as it. well. Mm. So it's kind of best of both worlds. Even though that's not why I purchased it, I wanted the six sure. by six look. Uh, but you know, it, these the one thing about the backs, and I think that's probably for the S eight too, right? Uh, Where the, the backs are are. Hard. This is an S A, right? Uh, S two A. S two A. Yeah. Is. Um, the backs are really expensive now. If you go oh, online, yeah. mm -hmm. you can buy the body of both of our Bronicas for the same price as you'd pay for a good back. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. 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 That's it's yeah. And that's one of the differences between the Hasselblad. People are still fixing the Hasselblad backs and bodies, whereas there's a lot less people that are you're, you're going to come across that can fix our cameras. Yeah, right. the Bronicas, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's true. And I don't know about the Mamiya, but I just know about the, the Bronicas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like the two quintessential, uh, I, I can't say the two quintessential, but there are lots of Mamiya people. Mm -hmm. and there are lots of Hasselblad yeah, people. Yeah, that's true. And then it's like Pentax kind of underneath that, yep. and then Yashica, and then and the Bronica is a little bit lower. Um, it's I've read an article, too, about someone was saying it's like the ultimate bargain uh uh, medium format camera because not a lot of people know about them. Uh, one article called it the dark horse of really? medium format photography. You know what it remi that. reminds me of? Hmm. It's com completely different, but the Sigma lenses. Oh, like for yeah. for film for, uh, for video. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how people just kind of yeah. Some people know what they're worth mm -hmm. and will talk about how how great they are, but everyone goes toward like the the Canon L yeah, series Canon. or something. And when arguably some people would say the Sigma lenses are sharper mm -hmm. sure. than the Canon lenses, and they are compared to some so. of them, yeah, yeah, for sure. So and now you don't have it kitted out like you did the other day. So how did it no. how did it show up? So it, it came with uh, so and the thing about the AI is it it's literally how it sounds. It's 
it's artificial compu- intelligence. Yeah, it's kind of artificial. <laughs> no, um, it's the grip on there had um, auto wind and everything auto. There's all these contacts. It kind of looks like a modern camera mm-hmm. when you open it up. Yeah. Um, it reminds me a but, lot of, like, because it was built in the 90s, right? Yes, it was yeah. built in the 90s. It, it makes me think of that time period, or yeah. almost a little bit like the 80s, because it's kind of, mm-hmm. it's boxy, yeah. and with the contacts and the black. Um, it kind of looks like Knight Rider's car. Kind of, yeah. It, it does kind of <laughs> look like that, yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful camera. Yeah, it, it, really it is nice. It's, um, you know, they're all, all of the cameras are great, man. It's like, I want to get one of yours. I want to get one of yours. Yeah, it's, I feel like that's the the problem is that all of these cameras um compared to a digital camera they're so stinking cheap yeah i mean right now kids yeah right now that's true because because they are unlimited resource yeah i mean think about that you know uh well i mean things have kind of gone backwards because remember i was was, did i mention it this morning about how expensive this camera was back in the day oh yeah yeah you were talking about so from what i was learned i don't know if it's true but I guess this camera went for $25,000 when it first came out. What? Hmm. Yeah. And I think a lot of our cameras were really expensive because these are, think about it. It's like these are the cameras that were used for magazines Mm -hmm. and people that were publishing. That's what they wanted. They wanted a good, a big negative. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't know that for sure. I'm sure someone's going to be like, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. But (laughs) this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah. Um, It's done. It's done. (laughs) Yeah. So the, the, the SQAI comes with the 645 back, and uh, I think that's going to just, you know, I'm going to explore it and mm-hmm. uh, do some more land, do yeah. some landscape with it. And um, But I like the square format because someone said it perfect. It kind of just, the symmetry of having a square mm-hmm. is, you're not, I mean, as a filmmaker too, you know, it's like, well, we have put people on a third and you, you measure your frame that way whereas the square it's a square yeah, it's a different it, way of looking at it it makes you rethink the way that you're taking yeah, photos yeah it does and it also is nice because you don't have to worry about like oh should I take this landscape or portrait mode mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. there you don't have either one of those it's yeah. pretty much they both are at the same time yeah um, so it's it's definitely changed the way that I have looked at photography from for uh, framing just because you mm-hmm. you suddenly I mean you certainly can crop it I know I yeah. know people who will shoot things in, and, and that's one of the reasons that they lo- love the 6 by 6 format is you can take it and then crop it however mm-hmm. you want um, and you have that resolution for sure yeah. um, but uh, it will influence a lot of how you take the photos yeah. just right out of the gate and I didn't have any intentions I wanted to go 6 by 7 just because I was familiar with that at first mm-hmm. with the Pentax yeah. and then ultimately after shooting your camera and just thinking about it like what you know it's such a big negative you know mm-hmm. if I really want to I couldn't yeah. have that landscape right. and just crop it like you're saying yeah. there's something so so satisfying about a 6 by 6 image Yeah, you're talking about the square and how you don't have really it changes the way you frame I think as somebody who looks at a lot of photography on Instagram and through photo books and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff, when I see portraits well done on a six by six or square format, it just makes me so content. And I don't yeah. know how to explain it because it's so neat. Mm-hmm. It's perfectly symmetrical in all the corners. And yeah. and it, part of that has to do with the Hasselblad name. And mm-hmm. I'm sure there's some psychology behind it, but man, I... I do, I do lust after that six by six format. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, it, there, it, there's something about it, especially as somebody with like kind of a little bit of control issues. So why did you go with the six four five then? Because I, I we might have went over this, but no, it, of... it's good. It's good to kind of go back to it because um, when I was first getting into thirty five millimeter, or I guess back into it um, after college, everywhere I looked, it was. Oh, 35 mil, but if you really want to be a photographer, it's, it's medium format. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, I want to do 35. Yeah. Tell me what I want to know about 35. What are the right lenses? What are the right formats and systems and all that kind of stuff? Mm-hmm. But everyone was like, no, it's just a stepping stone to medium format, which is where you're going to want to be. <laughs> and I didn't want to hear that, but it was eventually it happened. You know, mm-hmm. I switched over to medium format to just do a lot of my pleasure photography. Yeah. So, so did we touch on what is like what are the biggest differences between shooting 35 and medium format? I would I mean there are a lot of them. 
I think it kind of depends on. Yeah, I I think it kind of depends on the camera because I think a lot of the medium format cameras. So, with the exception of of like the the later Mamiya's or the Pentaxes that have autofocus, generally speaking, you don't have autofocus. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, that's also true with a lot of thirty five millimeter cameras as well. So, it's it's hard to make that be a large difference. But I think there are more. 35 millimeter cameras with autofocus yeah. than there were medium format cameras with autofocus um, because it was kind of assumed, you know, the professional is using it and so they know how to focus. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, definitely the sensor, or I said it again, the sensor size. <laughs> it's the, okay, the film size. The size of the film, uh, the size of your negative is much larger on medium format, mm-hmm. um, especially on if you go six by seven or six by eight or six by nine. Um, but I also think just the time that it takes because you're there's i've always said one of the big uh reasons i love film is the risk with Mm -hmm. digital there is is almost no risk you take you take a bunch of photos you don't like when you delete it you know and you're you're not any worse off you didn't spend any more money with film every time you take a photo you're spending money Mm -hmm. every time you're wasting an image if you do it poorly Mm -hmm. or you're you're you investing in an image if you do it properly. And you can't take it back right. as you an can't artist. Go, you know yeah. what? I'm going to snap a few here, and if I don't like it, I'll just delete them. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. So there's risk involved. And I think that makes us appreciate the photo taking process more because we know that it's either an investment or a waste of money mm-hmm. with medium format. That's even heightened because you, you know, you're not talking about 24 or 36 images per roll. You're talking about, uh, 15 or fewer. Uh, 10 if you're talking six by seven. That's crazy. So I think it does change the way that you shoot a little bit because you know that each image you're taking is using more money. Mm -hmm. um, And that's a big influencer these days. Um, So it it slows you down. It makes Mm -hmm. you want every image to count that much more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, those are some of the big things. I think uh, there can be better shallow depth of field with some lenses, but I think I'm sure if you shoot on a, a Leica with a Noct Deluxe, you're going to get shallower, well. That's but that's mm-hmm. true. That's true. So some people are uh, someone released an article about putting medium format on a uh, Micro Four Thirds. Medium format on my that's wow. Yeah, it's like someone one of their, made a the lenses? fitting for the GH5. Oh my god! <laughs> separate, <laughs> separate podcast. Oh man. Yeah, I think one of the uh, this is kind of not really related to the film photography process so much as it is just my ego, but Mm -hmm. I was in Portland recently and we were driving to the coast. It was beautiful Vista with all these rocks jutting out of the water and stuff. Mm -hmm. And there was this group walking back from like the photo spot. And (laughs) one of the photo spots, one of the photo spots. Let me not go there. Well, I I did, I did (laughs) go there, but there's a group of kind of youngsters and they got DSLRs around, you know, on straps and stuff and uh, walking past. And the guy stops and goes, oh, is that a Mamiya RB67? I'm like, oh, it's 645. And, uh, and he's like, oh, that's really cool. He had a 1DX Mark II, uh-huh. and okay. his buddy had a 5D Mark IV. Sure, which and are astronomically expensive compared, compared to, to yeah. the, my oh, yeah. 645. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I had not a care in the world for what they were shooting on. All mm-hmm. I cared about really was that I had the best camera on, <laughs> on, that, on that mountain. Well, then. I had the best camera. Yeah, yeah. And again... It is about my ego, but <laughs> I was not, I had no gear envy mm-hmm. and I felt mm-hmm. very relieved by that. Mm-hmm. Um, that Which I is, was very content that I had the best camera that I could have yeah. at that moment. And that's a lot of, I mean, granted, we can still have gear envy with film cameras, too, sure. but I feel like that there's even more so with um, with digital because, you know, the new camera comes out and it's got better dynamic range. It has, uh, you know, a wider ISO range that it can mm-hmm. hit. You know, there are all these different things where it improves. And when it comes down to it, all of these cameras that we have here are very, very similar in terms of picture taking ability yeah. in most circumstances. Yeah. They're all, and, and the quality that you get from it because it's determined by the lens and the film. And that's mm-hmm. really all that matters. Um, and all of them have great lenses on them. So you're gonna have you know a great photo no matter which camera you use. Small feature differences, sure, between them all, but um, but as a whole, you're, it's not like, I mean, look, so we're talking about a camera from the 60s here, if I remember correctly, the age of the, the first Bronica, mm-hmm. compared to the 90s. Now, you're, if you're thinking, if you're talking digital, a 30-year difference between digital cameras, and it's night and day. Oh, yeah. I mean, even from 10 years ago, I think about Yeah, my, I think about that. Yeah. 
My DSLR from 10 years ago, 1600 ISO was unusable. It was completely unusable. And it was like a, you know, a three megapixel image. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, you know, you have a, a 1DX Mark II, which um, I had until recently, or the, the EOS R or something like that. And it's, it's a thousand times better. Yeah. Um, not exaggerating at all. A thousand <laughs> times better. No. Um, <laughs> whereas these two cameras... I would be hard pressed to a thousand find. Thousand times better. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but those two Veronicas, they're both six by six. Mm -hmm. They shoot the same film. They both have very sharp two point eight lenses. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. yeah, there's something about it. When I got my first rollback, mm -hmm. I even showed my wife. My wife is not a photographer or, or has anything to do with this. She was even captivated by the difference. Mm -hmm. It just it just looks different. I mean, yeah. Just to bring bring it down to brass tacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. It's something you brought up earlier. You you said you pressed the shutter button on your first frame on medium format and you were sold. Mm -hmm. And I think it's it's true. I did the exact same thing with my Mamiya. Um, I was not sold on it when I first got it. Mm -hmm. First showed up in the mail, and I didn't know if I was gonna. You were having a bad day. I was having a bad day, but I also yeah. didn't. I I was having doubts about the camera. I thought, yeah. do I deserve this? Do I do, do I need? Do I really need a medium format camera? Really? Yeah. Do I, 35 has served me very well. Mm -hmm. What's this going to do for me, honestly? Yeah. But I took it on a trip. I had shot a lot of rolls of film on it, and I fell in love with the camera. But I have not seen any of those images from that recent trip. Yeah. But I just love the camera. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what... I don't think that that would happen on a digital camera until after you've seen the images, maybe. Sure. Like, oh, yeah. man, look at how much dynamic range or how, how good in low light yeah. or whatever. And that's what you're looking at rather than like, oh, that's a beautiful image. Sure. So, and mm -hmm. with film, that's, yeah. Yeah. And, no, and I think an, another big difference, too, between um, there's a difference in maneuverability between like shooting 35 millimeter and mm -hmm. shooting large or sorry, medium format. We'll move on to large <laughs> later. Um, but medium format, there's, it's a chunkier camera. And so it, it almost fits in the hand a little bit better. Mm -hmm. It's more comfortable to hold in some ways, even though it's like two or three times the weight. Yeah. Um, it just feels better in the hand and it's, you're able to keep it a little steadier. Um, and it just, it feels a little more natural in some ways mm -hmm. to yeah. shoot than 35. Um, it Absolutely. also gets more attention in public. I mean, yeah. these days, I also feel like, and, and this isn't the reason to go medium format. Do not use this as a reason to go medium format. <laughs> Buy it. But you, you have all the hipsters who are like, oh, I, I'm going to shoot film again. And I can't say that I'm, I was immune to that. But, <laughs> but everyone goes to 35. Yeah. So now it's nothing new to have a 35 millimeter camera. Everyone shoots 35 yeah. millimeter. Mm -hmm. um, and medium format is, is that next step. It's right. like, I, I want to go even deeper in mm -hmm. the medium, in, into film. Six months from now, Brandon will be shooting exclusively 8x10 <laughs> negatives. <laughs> yes, exactly. Guys, guys, guys. You're like, now everybody shoots guys, medium format. I 4x5 have to go is so lame. <laughs> Everyone does 4x5. These hipsters. It's so thing. easy. You get one film, like you yeah. get one photo per slide. Yeah. I know. On. What the heck? <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's definitely um, a difference between them. Um, and I, I think partly... Uh, what we were talking about earlier, the fact that you can switch out a lot of the backs. Not mm -hmm. true for the Mamiya, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's not a necessary thing. It's, I mean, heck, the, the twin lens doesn't have that either. Um, I don't know of any twin lens reflexes that actually have an, ex an interchangeable there back. Is. There is. Are, are there some? I don't know which one it was. Which, it's a, you know, it's not a twin lens, but the Mamiya that you can switch, you can oh, go. that's the RB and the RZ. Okay. I thought there was a twin. Yeah, I could be wrong. Hmm. I've seen too many videos. I'm confused. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think something that's interesting about medium format and um, maybe it's just a mental game that I was playing with myself like recently, but um, the instinct when you switch over to film is that you're very protective of each photograph. And you mentioned it earlier, Brandon, that um, you have to take more time framing up shots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your brain just works that way. When you come to terms with the fact that each frame is more precious, more expensive, um, you just take more time and more care. I wanted with my medium format experience to kind of break free from that as much as possible. And I don't mean that to say that I didn't want to take care with each photograph, mm -hmm. but I also didn't want the opposite effect where I'm so precious of each photograph that I never pull the shutter button. I never press yeah, the shutter yeah. button. Um, so with the 15 shots per roll on the Mamiya and 
the fact that I had a 35 mil camera with me as well. Mm -hmm. I was very liberal taking photographs recently. And I... We were surprised. Yeah, yeah, I told you guys (laughs) I was... No, let me ask you a question. If you only had a 35 millimeter, would you have shot more? More rolls or more photographs? More, more, more photographs. Uh, probably, probably not. Probably not. Probably not. Hmm. I wanted it hmm. to be. I don't. I don't know what you're trying to get at here, Andy. <laughs> well, no, me here. no, 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 no. Uh, it's yeah. The medium format's typically the opposite uh, situation where you don't shoot as much. I I shot more 35 than I did. 120 mm-hmm. okay but only by a very small margin because i i wanted to get to know this camera a little bit better mm-hmm. i wanted to um it makes sense just experience it as if i had unlimited film right unless as if it was just the only camera that i had on me and i wanted to take every he was in portland there. just so you know yeah i was, mm. I was, I was in portland like, Oregon. i don't know if I'm the coast back. was beautiful. driving along the coast yeah no that's yeah, one of those beautiful drives yes. right there in the country i think yeah i get it um, but it was an interesting experience because yeah. i was kind of treating a medium format camera like it wasn't a medium format camera hmm. like i was Ed shooting boy. i shot a lot and it felt great yeah mm-hmm. um expensive but it's ex- but great. very expensive yeah. worth it yeah in my opinion yeah especially in times like this but mm-hmm. uh i am one that I, because it's so precious, my tendency is to be very protective and never take a photograph. Sure. And be just like yeah. very slow and deliberate. No, that makes which sense. Which has a time, but yeah. there's also a time to just shoot what your heart desires. Well, then let me ask this. So when are times that you would choose 35 millimeter over medium format? Because a lot of people might, you know, we've been talking about medium mm-hmm. format for a while and it all sounds great. Larger image, more clarity, um, a little bit lower grain um, or a lot lower grain depending on which stock you're using um but why would you why are you not selling your 35 millimeter cameras beyond <laughs> price because we've already talked about price it's more expensive per shot to shoot medium format why aren't we getting rid of our 35s i think it's great for like family gatherings and mm-hmm. going to the beach or wherever you're going that's the ca- that's the mm-hmm. camera to bring if you're bringing a film camera yeah the 35 millimeter yeah the 35 yeah, yeah. What what about some of the grit? Because I feel like that's for me, like there are times when I want images that are very pristine mm-hmm. and very high resolution, very um, very sharp. Um, and, I, I guess and you I can get want, that with a 35. You can, yeah, you definitely can. It's not like all, it, there's there's a tendency, I think, with technology that the, net, the new thing comes out and we're like, oh, now the old thing is crap. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. now now the old camera that I had doesn't work well anymore. It's like, no, it still works just as well. And it's the same thing with medium format. I think there's a tendency to go, oh, like medium format, it's so sharp. Now my 35 isn't sharp. No, your 35 isn't any less sharp, any less clear, any of that. Mm-hmm. Um, this may be more so, but there's still a there's still a reason to be shooting 35 millimeter yeah. film yeah. Um, beyond cost. And um, And I think part of that is, uh, just there are times when I want something that's a little grittier. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. recently I was in uh, the Philippines and shooting a piece um, and we were in this this kind of village on the outskirts of the city um, and we were, I was taking photographs of this, uh, this gentleman who had been shot by rival fishermen um, and He's survived crazy. it. He was shot 13 times by rival fishermen oh. and miraculously survived. And so we're doing a story on him. And I'm taking photos as they're, you know, out feeding their their animals and and they're cooking dinner in the house. And sure, that stuff would have looked great on medium format. But I took it all in 35, and I loved just that it made me feel like I was part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It made me feel like I was in there. Like looking at the photographs, you know, the grain accentuates the yeah. feel of the piece. Mm-hmm. And that's that's one of those times when um, when I, I'm just glad that I shot uh, 35. I think, yeah. I mean, especially in that situation, that's the right tool for the job. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, that is, I hate to use the word, but like guerrilla war tactic. Sure, sure, you don't yeah. know the environment you're going in. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to be able to maneuver. Yeah. Um, I do feel yeah. like 35 is much more, it, you, you really did say it, maneuverable than mm-hmm. medium format, partly due to size. And also there's just an ease of, of use, like, uh, you know, most of the 35 millimeter cameras, like my F3, it's not mm-hmm. autofocus, it's not auto wind, but I can take shots super quickly yeah. because it's designed for speed. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And not that medium format cameras aren't designed for speed. I mean, yours is auto wind at yeah. times, but I feel like yeah. um, I don't use any of that though. Yeah. Now, <laughs> well, it does I, make it huge. It does. If I were to run and gun, that I think of the three, mine would probably be the fastest because mm-hmm. it's like probably. you shoot and you got yeah. yeah. Mine yeah. also has a crazy long focus throw on that ninety, uh, the eighty mil. Oh, I it, think yeah. that's um, common. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, as yeah, I I, in terms of choosing thirty five over uh, medium format one twenty, um, I the th- so the thirty five millimeter camera that I've had on with me for my daily shooting kind mm-hmm. of stuff has been a recently has been a Pentax ME Super, mm-hmm. which is tiny little mm-hmm. thirty five millimeter SLR, and there is never an, there's never a situation that I'm in when I can't have that camera on me. Yeah. There's never, yeah. I can never make an excuse to myself that I don't have enough space for it. Mm-hmm. Um, also, having shot a lot of medium format recently, every time I pick up a 35 millimeter camera, there's so many shots in that yeah. thing, you know? Like, yeah. man, I'm on shot 24, I'm almost out of the roll. No, I have more than 10 shots left. Yeah, yeah That's exactly. insane. It is. Um, it's like you just doubled your hard drive space. It, pretty much, it feels great. <laughs> And then I have to th- think about, you know, no, the, sen- the, the, the sensor size, if you will, isn't that small. It's still full frame. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I have to do a little bit of that mental game. But once I'm kind of back into it, you're so right. It's, it's so much easier to just like snap yeah. away on a 35 millimeter mm-hmm. camera. Um, and I find in times when I need to take a lot of images, yeah. mm-hmm. um, you know, it's if I only have so much film with me or I've only got so much time and I need to capture as much as possible, Granted, I don't know why I'd be using film. I, I would probably use digital in that circumstance if I had to capture a ton of images. But mm-hmm. um, if I'm trying to snap off a few things, be, you know, a bunch of shots quickly, it's much easier on 35. Yeah. Um, and because you have, you, you can fit a lot more on each roll mm-hmm. b- between switching and all of that. Um, and I do think back to, to like, you know, I took a 35 millimeter camera when we went hiking in Poland mm-hmm. um, and it, we walked, you know, 14 miles through the mountains, which isn't a crazy amount, except that we were carrying cinema cameras with us at the time. And so <laughs> that ended up being an excruciating day. Uh, but I, I was able to take my F3 through there without oh, wow. any, without a second thought. I'd love to see those. Yeah, they turned the out, those are some of my favorite photos. Um, uh, some of my favorite landscapes were from... Uh, hiking through the Tatra Mountains there. But um, yeah, I was able to like strap it on and it, it didn't add that much more. Yeah. Whereas any of these medium format <laughs> cameras, I mean, yeah, maybe yeah. the twin lens the least, but maybe. still to a certain extent, they add, they would add too much bulk and yeah. Yeah. wouldn't be as as easy to, yeah. Yeah, you and have it, to take something out of your bag in yeah, order to rationalize exactly. bringing yeah. that camera, right. or any of these cameras. Well, and I think a benefit too, to shooting 35 is if you're if you're just getting into film, um, a medium format camera is going to feel very daunting. Yeah. There, it's it's a different form factor. Um, there are just certain things that, I, I mean, you switch a knob from one side to the other, and your brain has to think about that yep. a little bit harder. Mm-hmm. And so, or with instead of like a, a thumb wind, you have like a, a physical circular winder or exactly. whatever. There are more things I feel like to get wrong yeah. on a medium format than there are on a thirty-five. Um, even from, you know, just the difficulty and, and actually winding the film onto the spools. Sure. Um, so if you're going from digital, if you're used to shooting on digital or you're just starting out, a 35 millimeter camera, generally speaking, is going to be much more um, uh, normal to Lower you. Much barrier to entry. Right. Right. So I've messed up far fewer times on 35. I mean, even even in this last year, I was loading film in the dark um, in a, the back of a dark van, and I loaded my medium format backward, mm, and nice. it was. I didn't realize it's until I finished the roll. It was in Ireland. We were in Ireland, oh, and backwards I shot, like you were exposing the backside of the paper. Right. Oh my god. So I I didn't was realize exposed. It. Yeah. No, I got uh, to the end of that day, and it was one of the most beautiful days that we had in, in this, oh, you know, no. um, this ancient monastery in the oh, mountains. No. And I, I finished it, and I was like, all right, went to change the roll, and I'm like, oh, you've got to be kidding me, because it was backward, and, and it just ruined my night. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So definitely, you can, I mean, and you can mess up 35, too. That. Sure. Recently, with 35. Yeah. I was like, all right, I'm almost done with this roll. And it's like, 37? 
Oh, no. Oh, 38. 38? Yeah. I had that too. Wait a second. Yeah. What so it can happen with any camera, but I feel like it's easier to mess up on medium format. One yeah. of the things that first kind of threw me when I was getting into medium format is how the heck do those... How was how was the uh, so I understand on thirty five millimeter the canisters are light sealed right they yeah. have that little felt strip around so mm-hmm. no light can get in it's all enclosed but one twenty it's just a roll of wound up paper it mm-hmm. just that that's what it looks like and just coming from that it's a it's a weird feeling unwinding mm-hmm. just a naked roll of paper because yeah. it feels like light's gonna get in somewhere light's yeah. gonna yeah. It, you know I'm, I'm doing something wrong I'm, I'm gonna screw this up. It's um, got to be tacky. I've never undone one. Yeah, I don't know that it's tacky. I think that it's just wound tightly enough. Yeah. And if you not. keep it tight, then it's there's just enough of a lip on that spool yeah. that it keeps light from getting wow. in. That's yeah, crazy. So it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't wind something loosely. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, something that I I was reading recently that reminded me. Um, so medium format film or like 120 film, if if the article was correct and if i'm remembering correctly um it was released in like 1901 with the kodak brownie number two Mm -hmm. that was like the first time that 120 film was released and it was released as the consumer type of film over 35 well 35 wasn't prevalent yet okay and so it was you know four by five it was smaller right it was smaller than large format and so like if you were serious no what i'm saying is that the consumer film back then was actually smaller than 35 um, at that point, I don't believe it was. It, I so the way Sorry, that go ahead. no, it's so if I remember correctly, large format was what like all the serious photographers did, mm-hmm. and so there was a high barrier to entry. So they released one twenty as like the smaller oh, consumer okay. friendly film, and around there was a like thirty five millimeter was either about to become a thing or already was a thing, but it wasn't used for stills. Mm. It was only used for motion pictures. Because oh. um, there, wow. there was a little bit of a gap. That's huge. Yeah, yeah, they started using it for film first, and then Leica released a camera that actually took um, 35 millimeter film for stills. And that was, wow. so then that became more of the standard. It just, I find it interesting because over time, the formats got smaller and smaller. So you went large format, and then they're like, we'll make something for consumers, medium format. Then they're like, no. Yeah. Pros are taking that over. Let's make something for consumers, 35 mil. Then they're like, you know what we could do? Let's make APS-C or APS <laughs> film. And so they made that smaller. And then then they had cameras like the Minox and whatnot that were like eight millimeter and okay, smaller. So that's what I'm thinking yeah, of. so they, they did have smaller films. I'm only but, about, you know, 90 years off. Oh, you know. That was, uh, Give or it take. wasn't that far. That was like, that was like Soviet era, uh, like after World War II, like spy camera type of okay. yeah. stuff. But still 70 years off. like we think Six nowadays years. of like 35 millimeter like full frame that's pro man yeah and it's like back in the day medium format wasn't even pro <laughs> it's <laughs> it's wild. funny how it's changed but uh, so what are your some uh some of your favorite film stocks for 120 because there's a much more limited range than there is on yeah, 35 millimeter you have not nearly as much thousands it seems like there are infinite numbers of different brands of 35, 35 millimeter yeah. film and then 120 it's a little bit more selective yeah i'm kind of boring um <laughs> i want to branch out but i i typically shoot only portrait 100 no. portrait 400 <laughs> yeah. i shoot uh well i shoot a lot of po- portrait 435 mil but i do mostly ektar um which i don't for, think is boring no i mean no if, if that's all it's that i shot i don't shoot any dangerous exotic yeah i uh I shoot Ektar for for landscapes and um, architecture stuff mm-hmm. a lot of times because it's it's sharp, it's vibrant, um, and I don't need to have the most accurate skin tones. I shoot Portra 160 if I'm doing portraits or just kind of general photography mm-hmm. with the medium format. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I have shot some Delta 3200 if I if I need something that's really low nice. light. Um, so I mean I guess it's not boring, but it's I, I don't have like a crazy large amount of right. of uh, film stocks that I shoot. Yeah, I don't have enough experience with it, to be quite honest. Hmm. I mean the the I'm gonna shoot on Cine Still Saturday, which is gonna be ooh that's gonna be fun. I I have some ordered. Do you? I do. I've Something got that backpack. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll do us all. Yeah. I'm gonna shoot it in a so this, yeah this, the environment isn't the greatest, but sure um, in a pizza. A restaurant, so it's well, nice. Is it an well, actually Italian the, pizza restaurant? Like a it super is, old school but enamel. The room we're going to be in has a bunch of windows it opened up. Uh huh. Interesting. And it's only half the room. Okay. And it's going to be in the middle of the day, 
And if you know anything about Cine Still, it's tungsten, which is going to be interesting. Really weird, probably. Well, you can you can. Do you have any colored filters you could throw on? Not yet. Just t- tell the lab to correct it in the scan. They'll do that. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. You do it very well. Interesting. So we'll see. That's the, that's the spunkiest. Yeah. What about I, you? You picked up a ton. A yeah, film dude. or a, or a, or a, a yeah. film? A pizza? No. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of pizza. pizza no, I, I picked up about a dozen rolls recently oh, for for it. my trip to Portland, Oregon. Did you go th- go through them all? No, I went through maybe half. Oh, maybe half. Maybe okay. half. Well, how many? Rolls I picked total? up a lot of thirty five and I picked up a lot of one twenty and I went through about a, about half of both. Um, nice. But I picked up a lot of portrait one sixty because I f- I wanted to take portraits. I wanted to take general landscapes. Um, and I didn't need anything super fast. I was only going to shoot it mm-hmm. at daytime. Um, and I picked up some Provia 100. Um, and I think that film is just spectacular. Yeah. Um, I don't know if, is Ektachrome available in 120 yet? Not yet. It will be. So until really? that happens, yeah, Provia, be. in my mind, is the best is the best slide film you can get for hmm. 120. And it looks great. Nice. Yeah. Um, well, um, we'll go ahead and end it there. I know we've talked uh, for a little while about medium format, so feel free to um, send us an email if you have any questions or maybe we got something wrong. You know, we're not infallible here. Yeah. So shoot us a, an email at podcast at thatvintagelens.com. Any questions, if you, if you just have a question about which medium format camera you should get or, you know, we, we take criticism well as uh, also. So, um, yeah, shoot us an email. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, stay tuned for the next episode, which will hopefully be coming soon. Take care. <laughs>